I am doing something that is my favorite of all time things. It is spending time with authors who have dedicated themselves to supporting family caregivers, authors and experts in this, in this case. So it's my absolute pleasure to introduce you to Barbara O'Connor Wells and Connie Pocaro, author of A Caregiver's Guide to Communication Problems from ba Brain Injury or Disease. That says it all. That title says it all to me. So let's start with Barbara. Why did you decide, you and Connie, decide to write this book? So Connie and I are both speech language pathologists. And a couple of years ago, I was at our national convention and I bumped into a friend who had just published a book for parents of children going through communication problems. And I purchased a copy of the book and, and read her book and, and reached out to her and I said, this is a great idea. And then I thought to myself, well, what do we have available for the adult patients that we also service in our clinics? Um, I consider myself a medical speech language pathologist spending a lot of years in the hospitals. So uh, started to look to see what's available, was really disappointed. Um, at that point, I had met Connie at a conference and spoke with her about the idea of putting together a book, a comprehensive all-in-one book for adult patients going through different neurological disorders and diseases like stroke, Parkinson's disease, and, and all the different communication, um, memory and swallowing problems they might experience. And like I said, we were reading out what was available out there and we were really disappointed, mostly written by doctors or psychologists or just one you know, short page on swallowing problems, which is one of my particular areas of specialty. And just finding that what was available on the market for our caregivers was, was disappointing. And that's when we decided to pursue creating this book. And now what's available on the market for caregivers about this issue is not disappointing because, yeah. because you're out there. Connie, I know you have different experts writing different chapters, which I absolutely love. That's how our um, Fearless Caregiver book started. We just wanted to make sure um, there was this great, you know, symphony of voices out there with everybody with their specific expertise, sharing their knowledge and their wisdom with the caregivers. How did you choose the authors for the chapters? Great question. And we felt the same as you did. We wanted the best people to write the chapters. Barbara and I had, had sat down initially and dis discussed what areas we thought should best be covered in this book and, and what areas would be the most helpful for people dealing with strokes, Parkinson's, those types of things and their caregivers and their families. And we sort of came up with a list of the chapter titles. And then we looked around for the best people that we knew um, who were experts in the field. And, and Barbara and I both work at universities, we're professors at universities. So we had um, you know, somewhat of that research uh, mindset as well, but we've also both worked clinically. We've worked with patients, we work with families, so we had a good idea of what needed to be in the book initially, and from there we just kind of contacted the best people that we thought would give us the product that we wanted in the, at the end of the day, and we found all of our authors to be a joy to work with. They were wonderful and knowledgeable, and um, throughout the process were able to, you know, make any updates or anything that we needed to provide the best final chapter for each each of the topics in the book. So Barbara, Connie touched on this a little bit, but let's talk about the different neurological um, issues that are covered in the book. So in the introduction that Connie and I co-authored, we talk about and define six common neurological diseases that it, this book is applicable to. However, it's beyond the scope of that. So in the introduction, we talk about and define what a stroke is, what a traumatic brain injury is, what dementia is. Um, we also include a discussion of Parkinson's disease, multiple sclerosis, and ALS or Lou Gehrig's disease. This book is beyond just those six uh, neurological uh, disorders and diseases, you know, it's applicable to, you know, patients with um, progressive supranuclear palsy or, you know, adults uh, with a um, maybe a chronic condition that, that are now in adulthood and are still struggling with voice and swallowing issues, for example. But not only that, our very first chapter of the book is all about healthy aging. 
Oh. So that book is um, really important to the book um, and to us as, as the editors, because it sets the stage of what's normal and then leads into the different disorders that we cover in the book. It's also very helpful just for the healthy caregiver to know how their processes will change with age, hearing, um, voice, swallowing changes, hearing, you know, I mentioned hearing already, uh, physiological changes, social emotional changes. So that's all covered um, in the book as well as the different uh, disorder categories that we talk about. And, and one of the things you touch on that actually with our fearless caregiver conferences, we go around the country, we talk to people and they're dealing with uh, different issues. And at first, many years ago, it actually didn't occur to me until people were feeding back what their challenges are that there are some neurological disorders that have communication in their child, MS, who, who would have known? Parkinson's, who would have known? So oh yes, Parkinson's is, is big. Like that's a big challenge. And we think about mobility with people with Parkinson's, yeah. but speech and swallowing are, I, I can tell you from years of experience working with these patients, and it's my main area of research, that 90% of people who have Parkinson's are going to have um, speech problems and quite a lot of them will also have swallowing problems because the same structures we use to produce speech, we help to use this, to use swallow as well. So um, there's a lot of overlap there, but yes, you're right. People might not know about those things and they might not be an initial symptom or sign of the disease, but they will probably come about in those progressive diseases. So, and I'll give this to both of you, whoever wants to start, walk me through the book. I show the, show the book, Barbara. I love that. It's just very creative cover, very nice. Can I jump in on that for just one second? Um, we utilized my daughter-in-law, who is a speech language pathologist for the art for each chapter. Great. Um, she made a little drawing. You can see it's kind of a simple line drawing to represent which what was in each of the chapters. And from there, that just became the cover of the book was one of those examples. So I'm, I'm really proud of that as well, is that she was able to use her creative skills as well as her knowledge of speech pathology and, and Barbara and I had a hand in working with her to come up with that. Lovely. No, it's, it's very, well, if you got talent in the family. Yeah. Shout out to Alexa Kites for doing that for us. Thank you, Alexa. Thank uh -huh. you. So in, in that okay. case, I'll start with you, Connie. Um, walk me through the book. When I get the book, I pick it up. I'm starting at chapter one. I mean, don't go through every page, but what's the journey you want a family caregiver to take? I think the journey could be very specific depending on their needs. And that's kind of how we set the book up. But as Barbara very um, eloquently mentioned before, our first chapter, which is my favorite chapter, even though I didn't write it, um, is that chapter about healthy caregiving. So that's a great place to start to think about what's happening with my loved one or myself that is just a function of healthy, normal aging versus what's going on with their disease or their injury that they've had. Um, from there, the chapters go on into you know, different areas that some people might need um, at certain points of a disease process. Like the second chapter is about communication related to speech. That was a chapter that I wrote. Um, my research interest area is intelligibility. So making yourself understood to listeners. So sometimes when someone's had a stroke or has Parkinson's or any of the other diseases Barbara mentioned, that can be a factor. Um, then we go into voice disorders, which is related to that as well. Um, we talk about swallowing disorders and a lot of people don't know that you can have a swallowing disorder. We very much take swallowing for granted because we do it hundreds of times a day in a healthy person um, and you know don't don't think anything of it but the swallowing mechanism can be very impacted by these diseases and Barbara and a, another colleague wrote a great chapter on covering that there's chapters on language and memory and the last chapter in the book is also something that could be utilized by pretty much anybody because it covers um, Fred de Carlo wrote a great chapter on using the arts to get your loved one back into the world that they I used guess. to know and appreciate. So if they like to dance or if they liked movies or music, using those things. So I don't know that it's a book you have to read front, you know, front cover to back cover at one sitting. People could do that, but I think you could pick and choose the information that was most helpful to you at the time with your loved one and what you were going through. 
especially when an individual is going through a degenerative disease like Parkinson's or ALS, maybe one of the early symptoms is voice and the chapter on voice is important, but as the disease progresses, swallowing becomes an issue. So now the swallowing chapter comes into play. We also have a, a great chapter on the caregiver, um, the emotional piece of caregiving and how the caregiver can take care of themselves emotionally, physically during the process of being a caregiver. And I think that is um, really important. It's it's probably my favorite chapter of the book written by Dr. Leah Kaplun, um, who runs counseling groups here at Nova Southeastern University. And it's just written uh, in a very heartfelt manner, supporting those caregivers who, who emotionally, physically, uh, spiritually, maybe feel overwhelmed by the process of caregiving and how they can take care of those needs and not feel guilty about taking care of their own needs as well as, as caring for their loved one. Okay. Where do I get the book? The book is available on Amazon. It's been on some of the bestseller lists on Amazon, which we're very, very proud of. It's actually even available um, on Amazon in the UK. So we're excited for it to be internationally available. It's also available on Barnes and Nobles and on the Johns Hopkins University website, um, which is the publisher of our book. Very nice, very nice. Now, when you talk about swallowing disorders, are we talking about dysphagia? Yes, we are. Okay. Very impressed that you know that clinical term, Gary. That's a big issue with uh, is. our, our, our visitors uh, our, our readers, and even our attendees at the conferences. So uh, I only know because I do what I always do is learn from the caregivers. Uh, so that, that, that chapter I co-wrote with a colleague in New York, uh, Dr. Mercy Barrera, and it really covers a lot of different areas. It covers, you know, what is dysphagia? What can cause it? What are some of the symptoms? Um, what are some common ways to evaluate for dysphagia? What are some possible treatment avenues for dysphagia. And there's a, a section on, on tube feeding because that is a reality too. When a patient's swallowing problem is just too severe to be able to safely maintain nutrition and hydration by mouth, knowing you know, what different options of tube feeding there are available. And the goal you know, in writing this book with each chapter is to not replace the um, skilled intervention of a speech language pathologist, but to, to better inform the caregiver so that when they sit with the doctor or the dietitian or the speech pathologist and they talk about the you know, nasogastric tube, that the caregiver will know what that means, that they have a, a rudimentary understanding of what those terms mean. And each chapter also has a, you know, a case study related to that particular disorder. And each chapter ends with helpful um, take home points and tips and resources and um, recommended websites. So we try to really arm those caregivers with all the information they need to be successful in that caregiving process. Connie, what's the one most important piece of information you'd like to share with family caregivers? I think the most important thing that caregivers can do is take care of themselves and learn as much as they can about the disorder itself because educating yourself about what the patient is going through allows you to have less anxiety because you'll know maybe what to expect and how to alleviate or help with some of the, the symptoms and, and problems that that person might be having. Great, and Barbara? As you asked that question, Gary, I thought of a quote that was put in Dr. Teresa Pisano's chapter at the end. It's a quote from Martin Luther King Jr. And she included, if you can't fly, run. If you can't run, walk. If you can't walk, crawl, but by all means, keep moving. And it's our hope that this book will help those caregivers keep moving through that process of um, caregiving and, and navigating the different communication challenges of their loved one. I love it. I'm thrilled you guys are part of our caregiver book club on caregiver.com. So are we. Thank you so much. And I want to entice, encourage, and motivate all family caregivers to run, not walk, uh, to get a copy of this book. Thank you, Connie. Thank you, Barbara. Keep doing what you're doing because we need you. <laughs>